All right, welcome to our online segment. This is for all you Facebook users out there. So if you're not on Facebook, you can't even, I can't tell you to go get on Facebook because you wouldn't be watching this, I guess, right now. But thanks a lot for joining us all season long on Facebook for all of our special segments we do. We got Tim Graham here, the Buffalo News, Jonah Javad of Channel 2. I want to thank these people for taking a break from stalking your ex-girlfriend. <laughs> on Facebook, I know. To come over and, and watch us. Yeah, yeah we have a little, an honor, really. little more informal here, so we can talk about Viagra and things like that. We're on Facebook, so that's... By the way, are you on Twitter? Tell everybody about your Twitter account, because if you're on Facebook, you're probably on Twitter. I am on Twitter. It's at Jonah Javad, uh, Jonah like the whale, Javad, J-A-V-A-D. And you are at... By Tim Graham. Be why. Be careful with how you handle that first part. <laughs> and, and why that is. That's right. Exactly. It might take you to Algeria. Be why Tim Graham. There is a, there is a B U I B U Y Tim Graham out there that hasn't been used. Uh -huh. I'm waiting for it. I'm actually excited about my my knockoff, my fake. Someone did do it though, right? Okay. And there is a B I Tim Graham that uh -huh. I'm excited about too. But well, I know there's a Sim Capaccio out there too for a, <laughs> yeah. like a simulated Capaccio, and it has my face on it and everything. Thing, but that's okay when that happens you know you've made it so that's it's okay right. that that's what someone told me once before I go back to the bills I will go back to the bills but I have to ask both of you Do we because have to? yes I think well we don't have to actually but <laughs> let's talk a little college football I want to ask you about your the uh, national championship game what you think is gonna happen Notre Dame against Alabama Tim well I'm rooting for Notre Dame I'm not a Notre Dame fan in fact I, I've kind of in my life been a bit of a Notre Dame hater I mean I've never really been much of a hater you know I, right but, I just think it's such a great story. It is. And I always root for the best story. And I have a bit of an such aversion to Nick Saban. You know, there's I hate just him. something about I him. I hate him. So him I, and John Calipari. I would like, <laughs> I would just, I would love to see Notre Dame win this game. I don't think so, though. I think Alabama is a quasi-professional football team. I'm not saying from a recruiting standpoint, although there could be. That's but I mean, they, won the they the program. are that good. I right. mean, they have, their offensive line is sensational. They have so many future NFL players on that team. Notre Dame has a few too, but I think Alabama's just loaded with them. Irish have a chance? <sighs> they have a chance. I don't think this is going to be as a lopsided game. I mean, because of Notre Dame's defense, it's not as bad as, it's not as good as some people make it out to be, but it's not as it's going to get ripped to shreds. I'm an SEC guy. I got to go Bama. It's a great comparison, Saban and Cal Perry. I never really thought about that. <laughs> yes. But, uh, um, it's great to see the Wait, Irish. Were you a Big 12 guy last year, though? I was a Big 12. Okay, big 12. just making sure. Big 12, then converted to SEC. <laughs> um, great to see the Irish uh, back involved. It, it doesn't feel like college football unless they're really competitive. Whether they win or not, I don't, know, I don't care. But it's good to see it that. It makes it more relevant. competing. Yeah, exactly. And, and don't worry, I'll be an ACC guy next year after being a Big East guy my whole life. I won't right? tell anyone. So, I'm absolutely. All right, let's talk about quarterbacks in college. Is there anybody mm -hmm. you've watched that you've liked that maybe even just fit for the Bills, but just, you say, hey, you know what? Because this class, we've been told, Jonah, is not Thomas. nearly the class as last year, but there's always a guy that winds up rising up that, you know, does pretty well. Well, we can use proper words like garbage and, yes. you know, underwhelming. Um, I don't think this draft class is going to be where the Bills finds their next starting quarterback. I think if they draft some guy in the first round, he won't be starting by 2016. Um, I know that gives him a three-year cushion, but, you know, they shouldn't be drafting a guy for three years. They should be thinking long-term. I think maybe two years down the road, Teddy Bridgewater out of Louisville, very impressive to me. He is. Most of all, I really like Taj Boyd out of Clemson. And he hasn't said he's staying or going he yet. He has not declared. He may declare for this year's draft. Right. We, he has to announce that. But his combination of elusiveness and the offense that he plays in, uh, he kind of gets hung out to dry, but he still plays really well. He's, he's a dynamic kid, and he's played against some very good teams in college football. Yes. I'd like to see what he, he and C.J. Spiller can do, <laughs> both Clemson guys. What do you think, Tim? I agree with Jonah that the, the the Bills would again prove to be behind the curve if they mm -hmm. went quarterback in this draft. Mm -hmm. You know, they should have gone quarterback Less in two. 2010 or 2011 right. to do it. Um, or I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a year off in 2010 or 2011 to do it. And I just did it again. 11 and 12. You 11 mean. and 12. There you go. To do it in 13. This is going to be 13. I got you. You know, although the thing that's in their favor is mm -hmm. that half the league has its young future quarterback in place because the Bills mm -hmm. have been behind the right. curve. So maybe they have the opportunity to get whoever the best is. The other thing, too, with Matt Barkley and his uh, shoulder injury, maybe it's an opportunity to get a guy who's got a pedigree at a bit of a bargain rate. Now, of course, he'll gain steam, and quarterbacks always get, you know, but there are going to be some questions around Matt Barkley mm -hmm. because of this injury. Maybe he slips. You know, right. Maybe the Bills are able to get him a little bit later than, they, than Barkley may have normally gone. So maybe that helps. I don't know. 
Uh, but I, there's really no sexy quarterback in this draft that really makes me say they, they got to get this guy. Well, when I asked Buddy Nix about both Barkley, Glennon, and Geno Smith, he said, you're in the right ballpark. Also, Ryan Nassib, I've heard lately they like him. Do you, any of those four guys that you think that they could really take and do something with at least? Geno Smith, I think, you know, he's, uh, I like him, you know, you don't. Did you see his, the game against Syracuse? Yes. You had to well, see both quarterbacks. Yeah, play. but I saw sure. some other games this year too. I mean, you know, a, a, a month off always kind of, I think, throws quarterbacks off. But think about the conditions that game was played in. Mm -hmm. It was played in New York. That's right. It was played in snow and cold. Buffalo, not San Diego. So think about. So does that mean you like NASA? Gino didn't play well a lot because of the conditions. That's it right. wasn't his technique I or his I think too throws. much can be made of that. I know it's a big deal. You know, we're, you know, quarter mile from the stadium right now. It's mm -hmm. cold out. There's, you know, ice on the streets and everything. And it's windy and it's been nasty. But how many, you only get to play maybe one or two of those games. And I don't, I don't know if a team should focus too much on weather conditions when drafting a quarterback. Now, maybe a, a, a minor factor here or there or a tiebreaker, but, you know, a guy, you know, I think you need a guy, often, right. a guy who's going to win you games in September, October, November. Uh, I don't he also know didn't play well down the stretch. Did, he peaked early, he did. and you want to see him kind of Well, let me ask you, does that mean you like Nassib then? Because he looked, yeah, he wasn't great in the conditions, but he was solid in the second half especially. I think he was more of a product of some of his receivers. They mm -hmm. really helped him out a little bit. He had a kind of a dynamic offense down the stretch. He's I two don't, good receivers. I yes. don't think he's the answer, and I'm really worried if the Bills take a real serious look at Doug Marone that it's kind of a package deal, Marone and Nassib, sure. and I do not think that's the future of this that this team needs to go. Um Nassib's intriguing, but what you can get him in the fourth round or the third round. There's no point in reaching in first or second no. round. Address your priorities first. Okay, so what is the priority? What, what, what do you think the Bills should do in the first round since we brought it up? I mean, obviously, the big linebacker would be Manti Teo. I'm not sure they can get him at number eight. I would, yeah, I think that would be a huge pickup for them. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we also need to see what they do in free agency. Yep. And, you know, obviously, some of the solutions are going to be found there. If they're able to get that receiver that they're after in free agency, I don't know if they will, but... Um, I wouldn't have any problem with receiver, linebacker, quarterback. As long as I'd like to see them get either of those two positions within those first two rounds. You know, one of those stunning stats that I came up with in doing some research a couple of weeks ago was that since Jim Kelly, the Bills have drafted two quarterbacks in the first or second round. That's 28 years. T Todd Collins. Todd Collins and, and I'm drawing a blank. And J.P. Lossman. J.P. Lossman, right. right. They've drafted 16 defensive backs in that wow. time. Eight running backs. And they're still needing defensive receivers. backs, by the way. Right. <laughs> so I'd like to see them actually draft the quarterback, linebacker, wide receiver within those first two rounds and get, you know, those are positions of great need for them. Buddy said they want a big time, I'll use his words, receiver across from Stevie or next to Stevie, put him in the slot. What do you think about that? I love it. I think you can get that in the third round. I don't think receivers in the first are that much better than the third. What about free agency? It's intriguing. I really like Tavon Austin out of West Virginia, mm -hmm. which means if they get Geno, then we could really be talking speculation. But Tavon Austin's that speed guy who runs these great skinny posts, really frees up the rest of the defense and allows Stevie to go one-on-one. -on -one. And Stevie's one of the best one-on-one -on -one receivers that nobody talks about. So that's an interesting idea. I still think quarterback needs to be addressed. I don't think it needs to be done in the draft. I think if the Bills can sneak in Baltimore and maybe pick up Joe Flacco, well, sure. I think that could be a real one thing that should be idea. one thing that should be mentioned about Stevie Johnson in the slot. That was in Chan Gailey's offense. That's right. So we don't know what this next setup's going to be. Right. But all things considered, I think Stevie Johnson's best in the slot, and somebody else with, with a little bit more height, a little bit uh, greater ability to stretch the field with speed. The problem is, is there are only a handful of guys like that in the league. Period. Let but alone of available. Let mm -hmm. alone coming out in the draft. I mean, but yeah, that's the that's the a miss, key missing ingredient there. Dwayne Bow, Mike Wallace. Right. These are some guys who right. have become available. And as Russ Brandon has said, we will not leave no stone um, unturned. Unturned. That's right. Yeah. And, well, whatever and, he keeps saying every three. And years, no but, restrictions. And right, no limitations. Yeah, whatever. So he says. Whatever. One, one other needs worth tight end out. with Scott Chandler. Now hurt. he's got his injury. You know, that's a big injury. It's a knee injury. Uh, I agree. Obviously, he's uh, turned into a commodity and a very reliable receiver that I think has surprised a lot of teams, especially the ones that gave up on him. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're going to need it. It was a big drop off from there to Lee Smith. Lee Smith's a blocking tight end. Doran Dickerson, he's got to be one of the most 
nervous players on that <laughs> roster with yeah. Chan Gailey being fired. I think, uh -huh. you know, Tashard Choice and Tyler Thigpen are up there too. Uh -huh. But uh, they're going to need somebody to play tight end until they're sure that Scott Chandler is ready to go. All right, well, let's then go back to, before we wrap up, what we talked about earlier, which was Chip Kelly, because that seems to be the name that you would love. But would his offense work, and can he bring a style like that? Here's the thing, Jonah. Like, remember when Steve Spurrier came to the NFL? It was a different era then. They, teams weren't doing things like that, but it failed miserably. Different offense, not the read option, but, you know, maybe a wide open spread attack. Could they do that? I love the idea. I think uh, these new ideas to the NFL, are they work because coaches in the NFL haven't really seen it. Right. You heard Nick Saban even say he doesn't like Chip Kelly's offense because it's no huddle, and his defense doesn't have time to make substitutions, so it keeps them on their heels. You want that in the NFL. You always see that in the two-minute warning. When teams go no huddle, they have the most success because the defense can't substitute. So when you put that into the NFL, you're doing it for the whole game. Even even it's Bill Belichick had Chip Kelly, Tim, come to practice to right. kind of go through the, how he runs his practices yeah. to keep his guys up tempo. They ran 80 plays a couple times this year in New England. The thing is, is that you have to have the personnel that can handle it. That's the and problem. the thing about the NFL now, it's gotten away from coaches who insist on a certain philosophy mm -hmm. or uh, system. And you have to, as a player, you must adapt to my system. As a quarterback, you must adapt to my system. It's gone the other way. It is, we are drafting a quarterback and we are going to switch our system for you. It's what mm -hmm. Mike Shanahan did with RG3. It's what you know the Colts have done with, uh, with Andrew Luck. It's what, that's what you do now. And that's how you maximize. That's why these young quarterbacks are thriving now because they're able to hit the ground running in the system that they ran in college, as opposed to you hold the clipboard and you learn how we do things around here, young guy. Mm -hmm. No, it's, he comes in, what do you need us to do to make you successful? The NFL is doing that now. The one right. caveat to that yep. is bringing in Chip Kelly. Think about the weapons the Bills have in terms of speed and things they could do. CJ Spiller becomes a guy like RG3 or a Luck that you're like, wow. Absolutely, that he would be offense. dynamic in that Absolutely. thing. All right, before we let you go, Super Bowl pick, AFC, NFC, and winner. I think Broncos over the Packers. It's all about the quarterback, Manning and Rodgers, right? That's the they win championships. That's right, I agree with you. That's been my prediction for a, a little while now. That's a lie. It, it, no, it has been. I feel like I should come up with something different. Just well, so I wrote we before the to... season started, Giants over Broncos, Manning, Manning. I'm going to stick with Broncos, but I like that. I think Rodgers still makes it and gets there. I'm going to go I, San Francisco. Okay. I think that uh, they're a, a little bit of a better team than they were last year, the team that got to the title game. Kaepernick makes them better than Alex Smith. Uh, I'm going to make a prediction that uh, San Francisco, that uh, Denver beats San Francisco in the Super Bowl by six. So we got two uh, Denver's. Uh, we're not on TV. We're online, Jerry. Who do you like in the Super Bowl? <laughs> uh, Seattle. Against? New England. There you go. See, who's going to win? Seattle to win it? Yep. All right, Seattle over New England. Wow. Jerry Sullivan. There you go. Thanks to Jerry Sullivan. Thanks to Tim Graham. Thanks to Jonah <laughs> Javad. Thanks, guys. That was Thanks, fun. Thanks, Appreciate Sal. that. No problem. All right. Thanks a lot for joining us online. It's Out of Bounds presented by Ghost Line Entertainment. Catch us on Time Warner Cable Sportsnet Saturday night at 10.30 and Sunday morning at 11. No.